Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating a rustic bookshelf with hooks inspired by an item that I saw online at Kirkland's. Now this piece has been on my make it list for a while and since I need a gift for a housewarming, what better time to make it than now? Now before we start, I wanted to say hey hey and welcome back to all of my awesome subscribers and visitors. And if you love these types of projects, be sure to check out and subscribe to see all of my new content. So now let's jump right into the project. Now here here is my inspiration photo for this project today. Now I really love the design and when I showed it to a friend they said it would be perfect for their new home with a few tweaks of course. So I headed to the drafting board and I came up with my own unique version for less than $10 and I hope that you guys love it too. So let's get started. So I headed to the Home Depot and I went to Pine Furring Wood and I picked up some 1x2s, some 1x4s and two packs of these paint sticks. Now what we're gonna need is on the one by four, we need to cut a piece that is 30 inches long. And on the one by two, we're gonna cut two pieces and these are also going to be 30 inches long. Now we're gonna cut two more smaller pieces from that same one by two and those are going to be five inches long. And then we're going to take both of those packs of those paint sticks and we are going to cut them down the center, making sure we have a six inch length on the side that does not have the handle. So, and these will be six inches long. Now we're gonna start off with those one by twos and we're gonna go ahead and use the long pieces and those short pieces. What we're gonna do is sandwich that short piece in between those two long 30 inch pieces as shown here. Now to join these together is really easy. You can use some standard wood glue if you like to. You can use the Dollar Tree version or some from the Home Improvement Store or you can use a wood hot glue. Now I'm going to use wood hot glue because it has a fast adhesion and we will be following up this project with screws for the very strong hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a generous amount of that wood hot glue on there and I'm going to join it right at the corner at one of those pieces. You just want to make sure that corner is really even so once that's bonded in about 10 seconds you want to add some more hot glue to the other end and place the other piece now this is going to form one side of your shutter side frame and then you want to let this completely dry for about 30 seconds and then we're going to switch this around to the other side and we're going to repeat this process sandwiching that little piece in between the two longer pieces and we can do both sides of this one at the same time. Now we're just going to make sure everything is nice and aligned. You want to squeeze it. Make sure you wipe away any hot glue or anything that oozes out of that seam. And once it all dries, you have this frame all ready to go for your shutter part of the shelf project. Now we're going to flip it over where the good side is facing down. Go ahead and grab those cut off paint stir sticks that you have. These are cut down again to six inches. And there should be 20 of the sticks since we used two packs of these. So what I'm going to do with all 20 of those paint stir stick pieces, we are going to lay them across the opening of the little shutter panel. Now we cut these one inch bigger than the opening. So this is, there should be a half inch overlap on each side. And we're going to lay these out where they're all evenly placed apart, just like shown here. Now I'm gonna be using my wood hot glue to adhere these. Of course, you could use your wood glue if you have that on hand. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take that first one and we're just gonna put a line of glue near the very bottom edge and the very top edge. Now this first piece is gonna set the precedence for the rest of the stick. So you do wanna make sure that this one is placed absolutely even. And then we're just gonna follow suit with the rest of them, just adding glue to the top and the bottom, making sure you maintain that 
equal spacing in between the pieces and then this will result in the most even and professional look. Now once you've done that for all of your pieces, here they are all bonded. I'm just flipping it over to do a quick quality check and everything looks great. So now we're going to flip it back over to the back and we're going to do a little bit of reinforcement. So I'm taking my staple gun and I'm just adding a staple at the bottom and tops of each one of those wood sticks. Now you don't need to do this, but I'm just really extra about making sure everything is so secure in my projects. I'm using a 3 8 inch staple for this. I'm just going to go all around those paint sticks as shown here, just adding one staple. That way this piece will be definitely nice, secure, and very professional. So now what we're gonna do is grab that one by four piece that's 30 inches. Now, if you plan to paint your entire piece one color, stain it one color or paint it one color, at this point, this is where you would join that piece either to the top of the shutter as shown here or on the front top edge of the shutter. Now for my project, I wanted to actually do two different finishes, so I won't be joining it, joining it together now. So I'm going to be actually painting the shutter part of my project white, and I'm going to be staining the shelf part, and I'm gonna be using my Jacobian Stain by Minwax for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that piece stained and out of the way so it has time to dry. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that stain and I'm going to be applying it all over the surfaces of this wood. Now when I do start applying this, I'm just going to make sure that I get the top, the bottom, the sides, and even the end pieces because they are all going to be exposed in the final project. Now I like to just apply it with a little piece of a towel that I cut up you just want to be careful about the disposal of these. You never want to dispose them or stack them up while they're wet. Allow them to completely air dry before disposing them for safety. So here I am. I'm just dabbing those corners and edges, making sure I get all of those cracks and crevices nice and stained. Now, of course, when all the sides are stained, you definitely want to follow up with a paper towel. This removes all of the excess stain, so there's no pooling or unevenness on your wood. And it also speeds up the drying process if you don't have any extra stain sitting on the surface of the wood. So now that that's nice and dry, we are going to grab our shutter piece. Now, I was actually supposed to go ahead and screw it in together at this point, but I got so excited, I just jumped straight into the paint, but no worries, we are gonna screw it in just a little later. So you could use acrylic paint or chalk paint, whatever you wanna do. I decided to go with some chalk paint for this project. Now the chalk paint that I'm using is folk art chalk paint. I usually get this from Joann's when they have a 50 or 60% off coupon. So this definitely a time when I usually stock up on this. Now when I apply it, I'm just going to apply one nice coat. This is really thick and so I only need one nice coat starting with the frame first. I like to get all the edges of the frame that's facing outward and then once I get that frame, I can go ahead and start doing the little slats on the inside. Now when you do paint these slats, you want to make sure you get in between them as well because those will be exposed in the project. You just want to make sure you put nice even coats all over it and here is what the final result is after you paint all of your surfaces. Now once it has a chance to dry to touch, it, here it is. And now what we're going to do is we are going to be adding a little bit of paint distressing. Now what I have here is some nutmeg brown and I'm adding little bits of black to it to make a chocolatey cover, colored uh, brown color. And I'm going to use my craft stick method to do my distressing. If you've been following me, you've seen me do this before. It's so easy and fun to do. I just take a little bit of that paint and I drag the edge of the craft stick along the edges of the piece I want to distress. I just think that this applies the perfect amount of distressing, not too much, not too little, and you want to do this all the way around your frame. Now there's no rhyme or reason on how much you need to do or 
uh, how hard you need to press. You just to kind of just let it flow as you go. Now, once you do the frame, you also want to get on a couple of those slats as well, since those may be distressed. And in our inspiration piece, they did show some distressing. Now, I'm not doing as much distressing in my as my inspiration piece, but I'm doing just enough so it'll make the perfect gift. So now that everything is nice and dry, now I'm going to go ahead and actually screw in those corners like I did before I should have painted. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and do this. It's no issue. We're just going to cover up those screws with the paint. So it really doesn't matter if you wait or do it beforehand. So we're going to grab our screws and the screws that I want to use for my corners. So I'm going to go with a number six, two inch wood screw for this project. Now I'm gonna start by drilling some pilot holes. This is very important. You always wanna drill a pilot hole where you want your screws to be to avoid splitting your wood. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna drill all the way down where it goes through the uh, corner down into the adjoining piece of wood as shown here. And I'm gonna do this on all four of my corners. Now, if you have a pocket hole tool or a brad nailer, you could definitely use that. But this is easy if you don't have any of those specialty tools and you have your base Basic drill you can make this happen so once those uh, pilot holes are drilled I'm gonna drill the uh, screw down into the pilot hole until it's nice and flush with the surface as shown here and I'm gonna do this for all four of the corners okay so now or all four of the corners are secured with those screws so now you can follow up with your chalk paint and I'm just gonna dab a few dabs on the surface of the little screws so you don't see them. And once you do that, here they are. You can barely even see that they're there so they're nice and covered up. So now that our wood plank is nice and dry, this is our one by four, we're gonna determine whether we wanna sit it on top of the shutter as shown here, or do we actually wanna sit it at the top edge of the shutter? Now what I decided to do for this project is sit it on top of the shutter at the very edge. Not only does this look better to me, but it also gives you that extra uh, three quarters of an inch of shelf space at the top that you really won't see. So now what I'm doing is I'm running a bead of of my wood hot glue along one of the edges of my one by four of course you can use your wood glue too and I'm gonna press this to the top edge of my shutter as I demonstrated before and you just want to press and hold this probably about 30 seconds or so because this is a lot of glue we want to make sure that this is nice and bonded to that top edge while we work so this will be temporarily adhered and here is that top edge all nice and secured Now once that does dry, I'm just going to take a couple large containers of paint just to elevate my little shelf a little bit so that edge will be elevated. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this to assist me in drilling my holes through the back of my shelf unit through the actual shelf. So I'm drilling through the shutter into the shelf. So I'm going to start off in the center here and I'm going to drill up my first pilot hole. Now I'm just eyeballing how uh, far down I need to go. We know that our shelves width is about three quarters of an inch. Um, so we just want to make sure that when we drill down in there, we don't go further than that three quarters. That way the pilot hole is going straight through to the other piece of wood. So I'm going to start in the middle and then I'm going to go about two inches in from the edge and drill another pilot hole. And then I'm going to drill another hole between that center and that edge. And now we're gonna repeat it by adding the two other holes on the other end of the shutter as well for a total of five holes. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab the same screws, the number six and two inch wood screws. And this should be sufficient enough to not only hold that shelf in place, but it'll bond everything together where there's no kind of bowing or anything like that and it should be nice and secure. So now I'm just gonna add all of those screws into those pilot holes all along that edge. And here are all those screws in place, all nice and secure.
So now what we're going to do is we are going to add our hanging hardware to our shelf. Now my favorite hanging hardware are these D-rings. I love these because they got a high weight capacity and these come with little screws included. I get these from Amazon. I will link them in the description box below. But I'm going to take two of those and I'm going to place one on one of the top corners of the back of the shelf. Now making sure you don't um, put it over any of the screws. I'm just gonna add just this tiniest bit of hot glue to the back. I like to do this to adding my hardware, especially when I have to hold something in place. This actually just holds it temporarily in place. So while you screw things in, it doesn't shift around and it'll stay in place. So this is in no way trying to permanently secure it. It's only to hold it in place while I apply the screws. So once I have that, it, D-ring in place. I'm just going to take my screwdriver and I'm just going to screw it in. You can use a screwdriver or you can even use your drill. So there's one already done and we're just going to repeat it on the other side. So now both of my hooks are in place. We can start working on the front and that's adding the hooks to the front of the project. So for the hooks that I initially decided to use are these little black hooks here. Now I love these hooks. These come in a really large pack from Amazon, such a great deal. And I think you get 50 in a pack and it's really inexpensive. So um, with these size hooks, I decided to go with five of them, one in the center and two on each of the ends. And I'm just evenly spacing these apart. Now when you space these apart and want to screw those in, you can glue those down as well. But then I decided to change, I changed my mind because I realized I had some farmhouse hooks that I've been holding on to forever that I got on a, a deal at Amazon, really inexpensive. So I decided that these would be perfect for the shelf. So these are really nice farmhouse style hooks. Look at these, these are gorgeous. These are very inexpensive. I got them in a 14 pack and they come out to less than a dollar a piece, you guys. So this is actually a really good deal. So since these are larger hooks, I decided to use four of these hooks instead of the five smaller ones and I'm just going to evenly space these apart along that bottom edge of that shutter piece of my shelf. So once I have that spacing all identified, now I can go ahead and start securing it to the shutter part of the shelf. And again, I'm just gonna add just the tiniest bit um, of hot glue on the back just to hold it in place before I actually apply the four screws to secure them. Now I love this method of trying to temporar temporarily uh, secure these because it keeps them from shifting around and that way you don't end up with any uneven pieces. So I'm going to use the screws that came with them. It comes with four screws per hook and these are easy just to screw in. I'm going to use my drill. They go in so really easy. No pilot holes even needed. And now that I have all four of them in, this is what they look like, you guys. Aren't they gorgeous? I love how these hooks uh, look on here. I'm so glad I decided to use, use these instead. And now all you have to do is to hang and decorate your beautiful piece. And here is my customized version of this shelf rack, and I absolutely love it. Now this top shelf has lots of room from your small decor pieces and all of your trinkets to display. And those hooks are so fun. You could hang hand towels, beads, and so much more. Now the stain made this inexpensive cut of wood look amazing and who knew that the paint stir sticks would make the perfect slat shutter design. Now this piece will definitely make the very perfect gift and this is such an easy, easy project to get started with.
Now don't forget that this can be customized year round so you can have fun changing out all of the things for all of the seasons. Now I do hope that you loved this wood project today and listen working with wood and power tools is so much fun and it opens up a new world to crafting and creating. So I really do hope that you give this really sweet project a try. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Craft DEE on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. And if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. It doesn't cost a thing. I'll see you next time.